Bolter. Lee is the CEO of Ascension Shared Services. Lee, um, I'm delighted to congratulate you and the team. You guys won not just one award last night, but you won two. One for culture and one for innovation and improvement. Quite yes. a feat, congratulations. Thank you so much. You've got an interesting story, Lee. I know when you and I last spoke, I think it was three years ago, you were just starting up at Ascension. Tell us about the journey. Well, uh, we are three and a half years in, or three years in. Um, we're halfway through our deployment, which ends in 2016, which is the implementation of uh, the ERP platform we call Symphony. Uh, it's been quite a journey. One of my uh, folks that's here, Joe, was employee number two, and uh, he's just uh, passed his third year anniversary. And uh, as we head into May, we'll have 690 positions at the center. Uh, it's, it's been remarkable growth. It's just a, a really rapid deployment schedule. Um, Ascension is a, is a large organization, 145,000 people. Um, uh, so it's, uh, it's, a, it's been quite a journey. Which functions are you offering in your services? We deliver 24 services, uh, 13 across hired to retire, uh, and then procure to pay and record to report for the, for the remainder. Um, it's a pretty complete offering. Our offerings are a little bit different in that there's more than the traditional back office services. Uh, example, we do all talent acquisition for the system with the ex uh, exception of physician and executive. So we do the talent pool management and source the candidates. That's not a common function in shared services. We do leave management uh, in hire to retire. We do direct and indirect material uh, for healthcare. Um, so there's a lot of stuff, uh, treasury, cash, banking, uh, a lot of things that are not typically found in a shared service uh, structure. So you've had the benefit of starting off the way you want to carry on and you've made yes. culture yes. a big part of it. You won the award. What is it that you think you're doing just right? Well, uh, we started from the very beginning saying it's a blank sheet of paper. So how do you create a culture with a blank sheet of paper. So we started with something called cultural blueprinting. Uh, and we actually decided what, what we wanted the culture to be. And we have a mission statement, we have a vision statement, we have values, we have competencies and behaviors that were all defined in the first six months of the organization. Who we are as an organization has a 400 year very rich history. Um, we're faith-based healthcare, the largest in the world, um, and that history is 400 years deep. And it was really important to me that every single associate know that history, be a part of that history, and understand that they are affecting a patient's life with every single thing that they do every day. So we, we have a whole host of different things that we do in terms of exposing our associates to the core mission of the organization, which is person-centered holistic care with special attention for the poor and vulnerable. Um, and, and really being present to that mission that the sisters and the fathers began 400 years ago. Um, we have associate formation programs. We, we teach Poverty 101. It's actually a class at the center so that our associates understand the kind of people that we, we treat. Uh, we have a community engagement. Uh, we have a foundation uh, at the center. Uh, their whole, it's, it's, it's a large set of programs all intended to, uh, to bring that culture to every one of our associates every day. We have digital signage throughout the center. Uh, we, we, we focus on one value, it rotates because we have seven values, it rotates every seven months. Uh, and we have active dialogue about what is it. We have active dialogue about what, what does it look like? What are the visual indicators of what is our culture? Uh, and we feed that back into what are we doing to create that culture? Um, we bring, uh, for our all hands meetings in, uh, we bring one of the mission leaders in from one of the health ministries to talk about their history. Uh, from their geography and, and the, how they came to be there and serve in that community. Um, and, and it's just a, it's a constant effort uh, to, to, to keep the culture uh, alive and fresh, particularly as we're growing so quickly. Um, you know, it, sometimes it feels to me a little bit like Groundhog Day, but um, uh, keeping in mind that for all these new folks coming in, 
Uh, this is all new stuff. We have a, on my leadership team, there is a head of mission integration. And his job is to bring the mission home every day. Uh, and, and so we, we, sp we obviously focus on it. I mean, we invest in it. Uh, we believe that that culture is, is that important. Mm -hmm. You gave a presentation yesterday that was, I thought, one of the best ones here, talking about how to set up a shared services, getting everything right from the beginning, and yet it was still, if I remember, a six to eight year journey. So you've obviously described the journey you're on right now. Continuous improvement and innovation was a big part of that. Right. Tell us what you're doing. Well, uh, so yeah, the, one of the talks I did uh, yesterday was on the five long tent poles, the five things that uh, they all take three to five years to get them done. And so starting on those things early uh, is, is crucial um, because it's much harder to learn after four years that you needed to go back and do something. Yeah. Um, we do, uh, I think, a whole bunch of different things that I think are really innovative. Um, the one that we chose to showcase uh, uh, for consideration here was around how we manage uh, labor. Um, and I, this is my eighth industry, uh, and I've learned a lot of different disciplines, um, and my team brings with them a tremendous breadth of different industry experience. And, we chose a, a discipline called master schedules, which is very common in the manufacturing world. And we implemented that in the center. And it's, again, it's a multi-year investment. It takes uh, the complete decomposition of the processes, time, uh, uh, literally stop watching you know, uh, uh, all of the tasks that go into delivering a service, tracking and measuring those. And what you end up with is a model, a labor model where you can Tell it how much volume you might have, and it'll tell you how much labor you need to do it. So we're able to staff to the work that we know we have. Uh, we're also able to directly connect that to our continuous improvement work, because if I'm doing a Six Sigma project over here, and I know it's going to affect these six tasks, and I know one ta this task is going to go from six minutes to zero, and this one's going to go from 12 minutes to 30 seconds, I can make a direct calculation as to the value of that continuous improvement project. So I've, I've, it's, it's, it's a management uh, machine, if you will, um, that allows me to fully understand where every minute of every person's effort is going and how do we optimize that? How do we, how do we make that as, as efficient as it can be with a view to it's never done. It, it can always be better. Lee, it's a great story. Congratulations Thank you. and thanks for talking to me. Thank you.